Hi, my name is Dan Frank. I am in Google Developer Relations, working as program manager for communities. And I have a revelation to make. I know nothing about the ants. So you may be asking, so why am I going to talk about the ants? Well, because the ants are great teachers in the work that we do here about how to build systems and structures, we call communities, which are not hierarchical, which are not top-down controlled, where people collaborate and communicate without actually having uh, a manager to tell them what to do. Uh, I went to business school, they didn't teach me how to do that. They taught all kinds of hierarchical ways. But ANTS are representative of what we call complex active systems, and I will show you today how you can use it for your work. Now, uh, a little bit about me. This is the tragedy of my life, you would say. I've been combining the work in sociology, in HR, which is called People Ops in Google, and in software development for ages. And the eternal question is, what lies in the middle of these three circles? How can I combine all these three things together? And I found the answer to be actually in the work I do now, in the work with developer communities. So I'm pretty happy that uh, I was able to join Google, the Google Developers Ecosystem team. You can say it's part of a DevRel, where we go to individual countries, where we partner with community influencers, among them uh, people like uh, people who organize community meetups, people who uh, are talking with other developers and uh, making them successful. But I don't want to speak about our team today. I want to speak about Google Developer Groups, GDGs. These are volunteers around the world who organize meetups around Google technology, but also about all kinds of other open mobile and web technologies. These meetups are for developers. Uh, they come and learn, they share, they meet uh, each other. The work that these people do, they do it as volunteers, they do it globally in a very decentralized and uh, global matter. This is a photo from a pre-IO summit. As you can see, the movement is large, it's very active. They do about one event every hour. You would count it uh, very statistically. Uh, we don't have too many groups in Sahara, but the rest of the world has been covered. The GDG have been around for about 10 years. I would say with the biggest growth happening in uh, the last five years. So what characterizes GDGs? First, as I said, they are volunteer, they are open. Anybody can join a GDG as an organizer, anybody can come to an event. Uh, they are non-profit. If there is a fee charged, the fee is used to cover whatever expenses the organizers have. Another characteristic of GDGs is that they are very local, meaning that the main structure of a GDG is a chapter which is organized usually on a city level, but it can be even on a city district level or a university in the city. It's usually one, two, four, five people. The guys and girls here on the photos are from GDG Ukraine, which are people from multiple chapters who got together to organize uh, a Fest in Ukraine last year, but they came from all kinds of chapters across Ukraine. So for GDGs, the main focus, <coughs> and that's very important, is local chapter. Now, they are self-organized. Be as Google as their partners don't really prescribe the level of organization. They should be uh, ideally flat uh, in the sense of uh, leadership and hierarchies. But they organize in all kinds of ways. This is GDG Netherlands. Also, you can see it's, they are pretty diverse. Not everyone here on the photo is a, uh, is a man, not everyone is a developer, not everyone is Dutch even, and uh, looking at the photo, not everyone is uh, even uh, 18 years of age. So the diversity in the sense of different approaches is very important for GDGs. The role of Google or Google Developers Organization is that you are partners to GDG. We don't own GDG, we don't direct GDG, we really strive to maintain GDG's independence on Google. By partnership, uh, we mean that we are helping them with setting up the infrastructure in terms of system, sometimes sponsorships. The growth uh, happened since 2007. I was very privileged to be in the group, which started uh, the first meetup in Prague. Van Rapper uh, did a meetup in Silicon Valley. Very shortly afterwards, there was also a meetup in uh, the Philippines actually happening. Uh, so it happened all 
pretty much at once at three very different places uh, around the world. And it grew to this incredible size as of today, uh, in the mostly past five years. So what helped this growth? How did it happen without any ownership, any control, any directedness? And this is what brings us to the complex adaptive systems, which are very well illustrated by these four systems I am bringing up here. The traffic in uh, Southeast Asia, where cars go and people go without any traffic light, any uh, traffic sign, any police, and nobody gets hurt. Uh, it's uh, observed on markets, on financial markets, where on the end of the day, you get very complex uh, value without any formula, however complicated. Because there is a difference between complicated and complex. What's complicated can be predicted. What's complex, like these systems and like community work, can't be really predicted. We, we can also see it, now we are coming to the ants, right? We can also see it at ants colonies. There is no boss. The queen mother isn't really directing the ants. Hey, you guys go and fetch this insect this day. You guys repair the left wing of our colony. It just happens sort of spontaneously, you would say. But as you'll describe later, there is a system. And finally, it can be very well observed in uh, the flock uh, of the birds, which create incredible structures, but there is no design to it. There is no plan to it. What is common for all of these things, and I'll be asking you guys a little bit later what you see there, is that it's independent individuals, or they're called agents in uh, the theory, who make choices and decisions on their own. There is nobody telling them what to do. And on the end of the day, or the life of the ant colony, you see something beautiful and quite uh, complex created, but without the structure being predefined, predefined or without the control being imposed over the individual actors or agents. Now, what do you guys think? Uh, I mean, when I see the pictures, I see that there is a coordination of the symptoms coming from the inside of the individuals. That's coming from the inside of the individuals. There is no prescription. What what should be the end state? What should be the, the value of the stock market? A couple other things. No yeah. central authority. No central authority. Uh, emergent order. Emergent order. You have studied textbooks. <laughs> but you are right. Uh, there was somebody on the back. Uh, Work with simple so, so you can totally get it. And the thing is, the moment that I saw this, I realized, hell, this is exactly how we actually help the GDGs grow. And I realized that I want to learn more about this system. Because if they can do it, that's not what they taught me on business school. But that's how they actually create incredible results. So... I found out this whole scheme is called complex adaptive systems. Anybody heard about complex adaptive systems? They are actually quite a big theme across the disciplines. Computer science, biology, physics, mathematics, social sciences, community work from today on. And basically it says, forget the hierarchical models, don't get inspired by them. Look at how the ants do it. And basically the, the, the model says is that it reverses the action and creation of stuff. So instead of a central committee give the order and command, it's the interaction of independent, local, let's say simple, they call it agents in the theory, who interact, who decide their own behaviors. And that's very important as well. Like nobody tells them what to do. They just give them some rules, some resources, I mean the system, and then the end <coughs> makes the decisions. They need to interact. The interactions need to lead to feedback adaptation. And finally, you have emergence. You have actually the final product that otherwise would be dictated from the uh, top two. From the very few sessions I saw here today about the communities, I saw so many references to this model without actually making the conscious link. So I want to, and that's the whole point of my presentation today. I want to show you how you can actually look at the work that you do. And uh, I'm probably not going to bring any new revelations. And see actually how this model can apply to what you do and give you many more answers to uh, various individual questions. So let's look at the three main areas. One, how do we work with the 
agents. So if I say agents, I will mean probably the community members, which in our case, for meetup groups, it's community organizers. For you, it will be contributors, basically the people who form the community. How do we create it so that they are empowered to act? The next step must happen, that they actually interact together. And the third thing is that we support emergence. Any complex adaptive system like our communities or GDGs must be able to support this for, for the emergence to happen. You can't have emergence even if you have agents without the feedback and uh, interaction. So a couple examples. Can you remind me again how much time I have? I'm a little bit off track. You don't know? Ten minutes. That's perfect. So the first one about agents. These are some GG organizers. I have no idea what's happening here, but uh, it was probably one of the decisions and behaviors that nobody controls. So it just happened. So three things need to happen. This is the first one. You need to, I would say they have to be same but different. It's very dialectical, right? So they need meet, must be same in the way of sharing the same values. For us in GDGs, the value is you must be passionate about technology, you must be passionate about exploring that with other people, you must be doing it from your intrinsic reasons, like somebody uh, uh, in here, uh, you must have full strong integrity, and that's about it. We are very, and by we I mean the GDG leads, GDG organizers, and us in Google supporting them. We are very strong about this. We really don't want people who don't share these values among us. At the same time, everything else is optional. They can be young, old, they can have gray hair, they can be underage, whatever. <clears throat> but there needs to be some gateway. I know many communities don't have that gateway. For the communities of our size, that would be a little bit uh, risky. Because as I will show later, culture drives the decisions and culture is driven by the shared sort of set of values in the people of the community. So we have some gateways. Again, they are very regional distributed. Sometimes it's the chapter organizer who sort of like screens the new organizers. Sometimes they delegate this role to us, to the regional leads in the given countries. Sometimes it's uh, by other means, but basically there, are, there is some step they need to make. By the way, this is one thing that we don't speak about much. Uh, how do we get rid of the rotten apples, right? Uh, let's put it this way. Uh, the simple answer is there needs to be clear rules, uh, clear description. If certain behavior happens, if somebody behaves in a way X, Y, Z, and that sort of isn't corrected, we will ask this organizer to stop calling himself or herself an organizer. So this is one thing, the agent selection. The other one, because remember, they will, they will make decisions on their own. So you need to throw them into a system. And this is where uh, in Google are quite, uh, I would say, instrumental. So we provide some simple rules. The rule isn't the best word. It's more like the property of the system. So basically, the, the rules for the GDG organizers is that in order to be active, you have to do one event every quarter. Uh, you have to communicate with the rest of your peers. You have to let us... Uh, meaning the central system know about what you guys did. Uh, and uh, that's probably pretty much it. Uh, there are also some limits, right? So if you don't prescribe what to do, you also have to tell the agents, I'm not saying ants anymore, what are the boundaries of their playground. So for us, for example, we say uh, the, the activities you do, and we just say events, event, Maybe it's an event, maybe it's an online activity, but it should be non-profit, it should be salesy, it shouldn't like sell any company's products like directly, uh, including Google's. Uh, there are some legal and uh, sort of compliance requirements. But again, that's it. We say, here are the very simple rules, here are very simple limits. The beauty of the complex adaptive systems is that the individual organisms are fairly non-complicated. Let's put it this way. So you, you don't have to have huge requirements of the individual actors. But if you put them together in the right system, they actually create this beautiful like, flock of birds. Things. And finally, resources. So every single of our little ants, uh, the great organizers, they know what they can get from Google, they know what they can get from the rest of the community, they know how to work with other sponsors, etc. And this is the all what they need to know, right? 
So you need to select the right people, you need to put them into the right system. And finally, they will make their own decisions. Nobody will make it for them. What drives these decisions is not necessarily the system. The system is just the playground, but it's really the culture. So again, I can't uh, stress how important uh, what you call culture fit uh, is. And by the way, that's a term that we also use in Google a lot. We, when we get Googlers in, also they get lots of freedom. So we're working for the culture fit. The culture fit in our, uh, in our meaning um, means that yes, we're working for the values. But you know what? If we are all the same, that would be not just boring, but the system would die. Like uh, as any biologist would describe, the system which is not diverse is doomed to fail in the sense of the changing uh, external environment. So the diversity is not diversity in the sense of like social identity or gender. It's more like on the way of thinking, of approaching things. We have just developers. We encourage designers, entrepreneurs to join the community as uh, organizers. The other part is that the culture must be maintained. Now, we are in the about 10th year of GDG, and this starts to be uh, a theme for us. How do we make sure that the culture which was like, created on the origin early days is put forward. One is, yes, it's the onboarding, but you have all things like stories, heroes, uh, t-shirts, right? you've got logos and stuff. It's sort of like, there is the value. So this is the first thing, right? Simple onboarding, simple rules and uh, limits, which creates the system and the strong culture, which drives the uh, decisions because you won't be deciding for them. The second one, <clears throat> if we have these people, how do we make them interact? This is from a UK summit about two weeks ago. Three things. Um, the, and I have seen this actually on a couple of presentations here today, being a topic. How do we get people to contribute? How do we get people to communicate with each other? Well, here is a also like golden formula that we saw. Uh, actually, as we from Fedora showed a couple hours here ago, she said, for the new newcomers to Fedora project, we want to make sure that they learn, I mean, to be uh, more empowered. We want to ensure that they can immediately and easily start contributing as the contribution part. And we want to make sure that they are aligned with the values of Fedora. I'm quoting B, hope I did the quote uh, right. But this is the same for Google Developer Group stuff, the same for any community. This is the reason why people join communities. They want to find their tribe, they want to be back to people, and they want to contribute stuff. So, Again, uh, in our case, we <coughs> really <coughs> strive to make this uh, easy for people. Uh, the examples of failed projects, uh, besides GDGs, also in uh, Google, we support a program for the other communities called Together with Google Developers, which I'm running. And uh, this is a program for other communities to get connected to us and get some of the resources we have uh, available for them. We tried to stimulate interactions on them. It didn't work. Like the, the forum, the discussion board we set up, we moderated, no interaction. Why? For two reasons. One, there was not a strong identity. Like there are, like what does the Java user group from Chile has the same with, uh, let's say, uh, Android user group from Siberia? Probably nothing, right? So the, the identity was there. The contribution was also difficult. Like they, if they shared something, there was not a clear understanding how the other groups will use that learning for. So we actually cancelled any ideas about building a tribe from that. It must be easy. Uh, I can't stress this more. I have seen communities implement very difficult systems for people to interact and communicate. So for us, the easiness is done by the diversity of channels. Because they are so hyper-local, we inspire the communities to communicate on the chapter level. So that if there are two or three organizers that they meet very often, they share stuff. Ideally, they should also share on the national level. When it goes to regional and global level, there is quite a bit of noise. The contributions may not be necessarily relevant. So it's actually the order of uh, importance. Also, the and uh, I heard it a couple times here on uh, Flame as well, the importance of face-to-face -face meetups, like nothing can really replace that. So again, that's the role that we play in Google, uh, something which the community uh, may have it uh, hard to do it themselves. So we fly in together for one day or two days or three days to share, to learn, to have a, a conference similar to ours. And finally, it must be safe. Uh, safe in the sense of people being included, involved. We, 
Uh, most of the organizers in some regions are trained in the training we have internally. It's called unconscious bias. And that's one of the things how people actually unconsciously may create atmosphere of non-inclusion, right? It's, it's not conscious. People may say stuff, do stuff, which they don't really mean, but it's not interpreted in the right way on their side, or it doesn't come across well. There are more things like this. The whole theme of gender inclusiveness, for example, for me, falls into this. How to make somebody have a presentation called self-safe uh, spaces, or will have. How to create a safe space. That's very important. Finally, make the learnings used and reused. Uh, this is, again, a big theme for us. Um, we are building, we are helping the communities, for example, build something they call GDG Wisdom, where they actually capture some of the interesting learnings from around the world and find a way to distribute it to uh, others. I need to speak up a little bit, so let's go to the final part. So we have the relatively non-complicated agents selected well. We have the interacting because we want to interact. The interaction channels are easy and safe. So finally, let's get some work done out of that, right? This is from DevFest. Uh, anybody heard about DevFest? Some of you? So uh, last year we had like 300 conferences. It's usually one two-day conference, purely organized by the communities. It started with from very humble origins in India and grew to this by the communities. We just supported what we saw happening in the community world, we in Google. Right? We didn't really invent uh, the format, at least in the way that is happening today. So what needs to happen? Of course, the agents, why they are interesting that the uh, stuff happens. And this is, I would say, very important for you guys in uh, software uh, communities. So one, constantly evolve uh, stuff. You, the, the structure must be flexible. For example, GDG is meetup based, but now we see groups actually doing online meetups, for example. Uh, we see groups doing non-meetup activities. That's okay. That sort of like fills, fills within the simple system, the culture. So what? Maybe there will be something like the next big thing will drop from it. Uh, the roles. We are now looking for people in the non-organizer role who become mentors, for example, coaches to others. And again, it fits the overall system. You just observe, you know, this uh, booming. Uh, Slack, for example, we are now exploring Slack, which we didn't do last year for communication. And again, because the organizers suggested it. The second, <clears throat> so for us, GDG, this is not such a big theme like for the software contributor communities, where you would have like forked projects and, you know, needed to merge branches, etc. But <clears throat> for us, the important part is visibility. So the first, got scaled up to the whole rest of the world because the DevFest organizers had a way in India to share the success to other organizers. They were visible and the other people listened. So it wasn't just some spam box because they found it, again, that's coming back. The interaction was valuable. It was valuable for me to read some crazy email from somebody in Bangalore about how they did uh, their uh, DevFest. And uh, finally, reputation is a big thing. Uh, it's a huge theme. Uh, if people are able sort of to create like snowball collaborations and you don't tell them who should collaborate with, uh, then it's a lot about reputation. So again, make individual contributors pretty visible. That's another theme I keep hearing here. Make contributors visible. Make sure that the community knows who is somebody who can cre create stuff. And finally, sometimes uh, people tell us so like how how do you like have ggs to speak about good stuff <laughs> no, 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 oh, 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 hold back like th this is not the way we do it the moment that we as a company would tell an independent community what to do we are done in the partnership i mean if i was a community organizer which i used to be uh, i would just walked out because the community organizer they want to do things for intrinsic reasons right so we want to support them in that we want to have people who are passionate about technology and we want to give them stuff which supports this passion so for example there is this uh, out uh, next conference happening uh, in march we provide quite a bit of content and support to communities which want to organize a streaming party but we don't require the communities to do that there is no punishment of any kind if they don't do it and there is no benefit uh, like increased status if they do it we just 
give it as an opportunity. I would say a signal. The challenge then for us as a company, as a partner, is to make sure that the signals are compatible with what the organizers want to, which in turn requires us to be a very good communication with organizers to understand what is it that they want. Okay, I should finish. This is the model. If you have any questions or comments, I knew I will be over time. So go to this document. Actually, people in the video in the future, hello, wherever is the camera. Also, uh, I will be monitoring this document in the future. If you have any questions, any comments, any experiences from your side of the story, please share them with us. Thank you. Bye.